Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the University of Rhode Island for this first presentation on Anchor Sports Media. It is Rhode Island College Game Day. Not only is it that, but it is URI Parents Weekend. We have an in-state rivalry matchup for you guys today. And boy, rain or shine, this is going to be a fantastic day. Noah McLean alongside Leah Popovic. I would want no one else, my partner in crime. Leah, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing good, Noah. You know, really excited to see this week how we perform, especially in the battle of protecting our state. Like you said, rain or shine, Ruckus fans are going to show up and we're going to have a great week. Uh, let's recap a little bit the past four weeks of football for Rhodey. Well, these fans have had some ups, some downs along with their team, but let's begin from the very beginning. Georgia State, a great opponent for the Rhode Island Rams, falling just a little bit short, 42-35 to those Georgia State in week one. However, there was a lot to take away from the offense, an offense that puts up 35 points against a very talented Georgia State team. There are things that head coach Jim Fleming will walk away with that he's going to say, you know what, this is a great opportunity for us to learn, to build, and make sure that we continue. QB Kasim Hill, if you don't know him, you probably haven't watched URI football. He's been around for seven years, 408 yards in week one. How about it? Week two, Stony Brook, always a good battle over there in Long Island. Great home opener. We talked about the ruckus crowd before this. I think it's going to be good today. Boy, was it good on that home opener. Fans were out here a 35-14 to 14 domination win for the Rhode Island Rams. A couple of great moments there. Jordan Colbert, impressive interception and a 49 fumble return. And Nick Correa was a major contributor contributor, excuse me, to a solid offensive line performance. And let's break down week three and week four. I mean, week, week three versus Maine, Rhodey, Rhodey came up with a great win, 34 to 17. Talk about a performance from Katero Summers. He caught six passes for 120 yards and two touchdowns just in that game alone. Overall, very impressive performance, not only on the offense, but from the defense as well. Really showed how URI is going to be competitive in the CAA. Week four versus Villanova. We did take a loss, 35-9. to Villanova handed the Rams only their second loss of the season, uh, just after Rhodey had broken the top 20 in national rankings. Still, let's not forget to mention an outstanding defensive performance by Evan Stewart, the linebacker with 10 tackles, including 1.5 tackles for loss and one quarterback hurry. Uh, currently, URI is standing at 24th in the Stats Perform FCS polls. And in the FCS coaches polls, they are receiving votes. They just received 45 votes, but are not yet ranked in the top 25. There you have it. That's a quick breakdown on our week by week for week four coming your way in just a few moments. We're going to talk about a couple of coaches under the head coaching staff of the all too well-known Jim Fleming. We'll be back after this short break. Welcome back, Rhodey Nation, here on College Game Day on Anchor Sports Media. Noah McLean, Leah Popovic, and Leah, let's jump right back into it. We talk about Jim Fleming. Everybody knows that name. Maybe a couple of names that don't always get a lot of credit, but there are some very talented guys on this Rhode Island coaching staff. Let's talk a little bit about them. Absolutely. A lot of new entries. Uh, Chris Burjeski is working on wide receivers, which, like we said, in the game versus Georgia State, although it was a loss, we had a great performance for wide receivers. Uh, also, Eddie Marissi coming to the offensive line. Marcel Lazard coaching the defensive line, keeping it even on both sides of the field. Chris Laurenti promoted to de defensive coordinator, but is still working with linebackers. Once again, both sides of the ball, Rhodey's focus. And Brandon Napoleon is going to be going off with defensive backs this year. Now, how do you think our coaching staff is elevating um, with all of these new changes? Yeah, well, I mean, Jim Fleming has, has a way with bringing in great talent, Leah. And, you know, you talk about being on both sides of the ball. We talk about coaches working with multiple different groups. When you have a coach that's able to work and know the game of football on both sides, that really brings it up to a different kind of level, especially here in the FCS. It's only getting better and better each year, more talent. Uh, you know, you talk about guys that come in and want to work. These coaching staff want to see not only their players succeed, but they want to get to the next level themselves. So they you know, got to come in and show exactly why they deserve a spot on this roster and hopefully make themselves a name for the rosters that they hope to find. in. And this year we've had a number of coaching departures. We've had uh, Jack Cooper go to Wisconsin, Umberto DeMeo go to Maine, Zach Meckler go to Manchester, Indiana. Um, number of number more names, uh, Chris Sato, who was assistant to defensive backs, went to Connecticut, and Stefan Wheeler, a uh, wonderful coach, went, went over to offensive line at Yale. 
Um, congratulations to all of them. We are keeping the roadie mentality here. They helped create this culture, and we are continuing it. Well, absolutely. And we talked a little bit about Jim Fleming and, you know, what he has done with this program, of course, off to a two and two start this year. And we can't not mention if head coach Jim Fleming with a roadie win today would tie Tim Stowers from 2000 to 2007 for the third all time and URI football head coach wins with 33. And when we come back, we'll have a special guest for you, Roadie Nation, on game day football. Welcome back, Rodi Nation, here with a, another episode of College Game Day here at URI. And now a special guest joining me here on the Rodi Show. And welcome aboard to Christian Arrington. And first things first, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate you taking some time out of your day. Thank you guys for having me. This is very exciting. Well, we are happy to have you. And let's jump right into it. We just talked about some of the uh, coaching staff here and, of course, you know, you went through this program. You've seen what this program is about, the culture, the coaching, your memories here. But first things first, first excuse me, talk a little bit about the culture under head coach Jim Fleming and what that meant to you. Um, I'd say that uh, Coach Jim Fleming has built a solid culture based around, you know, grit, family, and just making sure we're taking care of each other. You know, over the last you know, six years that I've been here, you know, I've seen a lot of things change from getting – brand new facilities to getting, you know, new uniforms, you know, just gradual changes to just make our culture better overall has just made the environment, made the team feel better, just made the overall experience better. And you talk about, you know, you, you mentioned one word that sticks out to me, family. You know, that's something that you hear inside and outside of that locker room. That's preached by the coaching staff, by the players. You see it on social media. Talk a little bit about how special that means to come here, especially in the college athlete world, you know, to, to have that sense of family. It's not just guys you go and play with. These are guys that you want to spend and, and go to war with. Yeah, um, I'd say that just the family part is, is, is so critical because, some of the people that I've played with on this field, I, you know, I'll talk to them for the rest of my lives. They'll be my brothers for the rest of my lives. So that family aspect is so important. But to me, that's how you really win games. The teams that stick together and are really, you know, molded together as one is are the teams that are that will win usually. Absolutely. And we talked a little bit right there about the team aspect. Now, let's jump into you. Don't be humble here. You mm -hmm. had a career here at URI and a good one, dare I say. So tell me a little bit about your career, Some maybe some stats that stick out to you, some highlights that stuck out to you, and, and why your roadie career was memorable. Um, you know, I think some stats that honestly stuck out to me, you know, when I look back was uh, I think my redshirt freshman year, I had led the team in special teams tackles. And that was one kind of accolade that, you know, I like personally, something that I actually got to lead the team in. Um, but, you know, you know, I had a career, you know, injuries here and there, but I still was able to make t make plays for my team and, you know, just be a great team player and just be there for my guys. So, you know, I think it was a, a great career overall. You know, I'm happy with it. You know, although I had to medically retire uh, this past August at the end, I, I'm still very happy with how things went. So. Well, absolutely, and we do want to take a quick moment. You know, that did come out just a few months ago, uh, your post, and I, I know a lot of people, we saw the reaction on social media, just a lot of love from this roadie community. You talk about that family. I'm going to go right back to it because we see there, and, you know, we want to thank everybody because he's right here still involved with this program. Just because he's not on that field doesn't mean that he's not making an impact. It's this, and it's a heck of a lot more down there on those sidelines, in the locker room, everything like that. And with your URI career, you know, a lot of memories, but when you kind of dial it down and think about one, what's your favorite Rhode Island memory if you had to pick one? Um, my favorite memory personally would have to be my interception against uh, Delaware during the spring season. Um, I felt like J.J. Uh, Watt you know, <laughs> taking a step back and picking the ball off from the, from the line, line of scrimmage, so that was probably my best memory right there. That was pretty good. I do remember the, the, the stands went, went pretty wild for that one, absolutely. And, you know, you talked about it a little bit. You know, your journey, every journey is unique, but your journey has been especially unique. You know, you talk about your six years here. You talk about, unfortunately, having to step away from a game that has brought you so much that you have put in so much into that, you know, this is love, grit, tears, blood, whatever you want to call it, football. This is this is you. Talk about your, your journey as a person, as a player, and, and how you kind of got to this point. You know, it's it's – it's had its ups and downs, you know, it's been positive at moments, you know, it's been negative at moments. Like I've said, I've dealt with injuries. 
had to medically retire due to an injury, you know. And injuries come with the game of football. But the journey, I, I would have to say I'm, I'm grateful for it. I'm thankful for the positive and the negatives because it's, it's brought me to this day right now, this very present moment. So regardless of how things went, whether it was bad or whether it was good, I'm, I'm grateful for my journey and I'm excited to see what the future is like. Well, absolutely. And you just kind of talked about it a little bit right there. But now we sit here behind a desk, the field behind us, no more football, uh, at least on the field for you. But now you're going to try to look and find other ways to contribute. You're a young guy. You have a lot to bring to this world, both football and as a person, of course. And let's talk about where do you see yourself going in the future? Um, right now, I'm currently thinking about getting into sports media, but on the side right now, I'm a, a big mental health advocate. Obviously, like I said, I've had my ups and downs throughout my career, and that's been something that made me very passionate about speaking about mental health. Um, speaking at you know the peer-to-peer -peer conference hosted by the Chris Collins Foundation this past week, and you know speaking at the University of Michigan, you know, National Government Association, it's been something that I've been very passionate about speaking about mental health. So hopefully to continue being a public speaker and continue being an advocate for mental health, not only for my teammates, but for other student athletes and other students here at URI. Well, thank you very much. That is a huge point of emphasis all around the ball, both on and off the field. Brody Nation, don't go anywhere. We will be back with picks and break down some special features with Christian Arrington and Leah Popovic will return momentarily. Now, Christian, you've been around the block here at Rhodey. You know a couple things about the team. Um, this year, 2023, homecoming game versus Bryant, who do you think is going to be the first to record the sack? Uh, I got to go with my dog, number, 40, uh, number eight actually now, A.J. Pena. Number eight, A.J. Pena. A.J. Right Pena. Now. I agree entirely with his strength on the field is incredible. He's got an awesome attitude. Personally, I think Evan Stewart is going to grab the first sack because he's on fire, especially after that performance up against Villanova. What about the first to record a turnover? That's a, that's a tough question. Um, but I can see I can see Jordan Colbert coming out with, with exactly. the first interception. I can see Jordan Colbert. I, I agree with that one, too. Uh, what about first touchdown? First touchdown of the day. It's rainy. We might have to run on the ground. I could see uh, I could see uh, a Jaden Griffin opening touchdown. I see an opening touchdown from the one, the only Kasim Hill rushing into that touchdown zone. He'll bring it out for the fans, especially in front of the, especially in front of the home crowd. Excuse me. Uh, and then, who do you believe will have the breakout performance this week on the field? That's tough. It's always somebody new. It's always somebody different. It's always somebody surprising, actually. Um, but I can see, I can see Kasim Hill having a nice little breakout performance this week. Something spectacular. I can see Kasim Hill. Having I'm gonna give this one to uh, Gabe Sloat. He had 56 rushing yards in the win versus Maine, and I have a feeling Sloat is gonna be red hot because he's defending his state. He's a native Rhode Islander from North Kingstown. Represent my own high school there. So, looking forward to that. We're gonna bring Noah back in for some final picks. Welcome back, everybody, as we are into the final few minutes of our show here. But something tells me we'll have more to come in a few weeks, so stay tuned for that. But right now, we have some important things to break down. Let's talk about final scores. First, over to Leah. What is your final score prediction? Listen, I'm going to say a high-scoring game. The Rams are averaging just about 28 points per game, and Bryant's averaging around 19. Pretty high up there. Um, I'm going to say final score. 35-22. There we have it. 35-22. We'll wait to get about the who will win in just a moment. Pass it over to Christian. What is your final score prediction for today? Well, it's like I said, it's raining outside. So it's going to be a gritty and physical game. But, of course, I'm going to go with my Rams. I'm saying 42-0. to 42-0. Zero. to zero. Brian. <laughs> and we're winning the state. That sounds good. Wow. There you have it. So... I'm going to say it is going to be a final score. I'm going to think 27 to 14. And, well, I'll start out. We kind of already got maybe a little taste of who we think is going to win. But I have to agree with, I think, safely, everybody here, Rhodey Nation, the Rams are coming out on top today. Christian, you said it already, but let the fans hear it again. Rhodey, 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 man. 
Rams, Rams, Rams. There you have it. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us again. Aliyah Popovic, Christian Arrington, Noah McLean on our camera, Luke Savoy, the man behind the scenes, Mason Smoller. We will be back with more next week.